Welcome back to Poland Daily History, where we're talking about Poland's geopolitical situation. And I'm with Albert Zwiedzinski, an expert on geopolitical affairs. Albert, we've been mentioning Russia throughout the throughout our, our, our programs, but it's probably worth going back, actually, and quite interesting to go back to 1648, um, when we had some, uh, some inevitable wars with between Poland and Russia. Absolutely, and uh, 1648 is the beginning of the Cossack uprising led by Khmelnytsky, by Bogdan Khmelnytsky. Uh, when it comes to geopolitics and how, how, how there are many reverberations of, of past events, um, the Khmelnytsky uprising and what followed after, which was uh, the Polish-Polish-Russian war that lasted for 13 years, from 1654 till 60, 67, and the deluge, they all they all had thorough uh, implications, which I will I, I hope I will mention in yes. a bit. I mean that again. It, it's funny, isn't it? there are always these these parallels in history that, that they were in the midst of a war with Russia, we then also have to face a war with with Sweden. Absolutely, uh, but it's it gets interesting because the Khmelnytsky rebellion begins for many reasons. There were, there were uh, political reasons such as the Polish state not willing to. Polish king not willing to, there, there was a war planned to, to, to go ahead with the Ottoman Empire and the Crimean Hanate. This, this couldn't happen because there was no willingness of the, of the magnates, of the, the, the richest strata of the Polish society to provide money for it, which in turn meant we could increase the number of Cossacks, uh, the, the registered Cossacks, so to speak, that used to fight for the Polish state, which angered them greatly. Then there was the magnates themselves uh, being uh, try, trying to turn the Cossacks, which were traditionally very wild and very free, and focused on war fighting, trying to, to, to force them into, uh, into work in the field, into peasantry. And then there, there were the personal slights that, that Khmelnytsky suffered from, from the Poles. His, uh, his wife, I believe, was uh, taken prisoner by one of the Polish magnates. And all those things led to the, to the uprising, which was a beginning, I would say it started the, to put Poland on a downward trajectory, which ultimately, over a century later, later ended in, in partitions of Poland. And, 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 and a conflict with Russia, of course. Which and a, conflict with Which is, yeah. has sort of never really gone away. Which the last, interestingly, the, the, the final accord of, of all that affairs happened in 2014 when, when Russia took over Crimea and, and eastern, uh, eastern ponds of Ukraine. Because what happened is in 1654, the Pereyaslav Agreement is struck between, between the Cossacks and the Russians, which immediately which is also what later both the Russian and the Soviet uh, historiography claimed, uh, used as a claim that Ukraine is, is inextricably linked to Russia. It's a, it's a single single space, so to speak. And with the, with the Pereyaslav Agreement in 1654, uh, Khmelnytsky pledges allegiance to Russia. Russia immediately, on the basis of that agreement, attacks Poland. The war lasts for 13 years. And uh, is is ended with a treaty of Andrushov, which uh, in which Poland uh, uh, had to give up the, the Smolensk uh, the whole, stronghold yes, and, and Kiev and, and yes, that whole, many, sure. the, the the whole uh, left bank. Yes, of, of, of left, or left bank of Ukraine. Of, the, yes. Known as the left bank yes. of Ukraine. Yeah, along the Dnieper River. East, yes. Eastern bank for those who have an atlas yes. in front yes. of them. This is because, of course, Dnieper ends in, in the Black Sea. So if you look at the, how the stream works there. Yes, if yeah. you, you, you follow the, the flow yeah. of the river, otherwise it's a bit confusing. Um, yes, and, and of course, it, it's probably worth saying isn't it, that of course, the, the earlier, the, uh, slightly earlier war in 16, uh, 1604 to 1618, the, the, the Russian-Polish war, which actually one of the um, results of that war, of course, was to put the Romanovs ultimately, it was, well, yes. I'm, I'm sort of skipping through a lot of history, but it's when the Romanovs became yes. the, the, the rulers of, yes. the rulers of the, Russia, the, and they the, survived until 1917. Yes, and it ended the previous dynasty, which then went on theoretically to Rurik, who established the the the, the Kievan Rus, the, the 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 very basis of the of the, uh, well, really not just Uc not really even Ukrainian, but of uh, mm, in a way a, a Russian state. This this is how 
how, how, and, how and it's then probably also mentioning obviously this war between Russia and Poland, but at the same time the deluge, the, the, yes. which of course has been made famous in literature, which is the Swedish from about 1655 yes. to 1660, which I think is notable for its cultural destruction. Of, in terms of damage to, to and towns economic, yes. and economic, I mean, it, it, it's it really quite remarkable. Comparable, some say comparable to the destruction Poland uh, experienced during the Second World Which War. Which is actually remarkable for, 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 right? for that for, at that yeah. time you could wreak so much. Havoc. I mean, Germans. I mean, Swedes were very impressive. They had they had a low revolutionary military affairs on their own. They had conscription based uh, army. Uh, and a series of very talented rulers and advisors to those rulers, which, which permitted them great success. And that starts in 1654, in 1655. Um, what is interesting, however, going back to the Polish-Russian war, is uh, it began in 1654. 300 years later, uh, in 1954, to celebrate the 300th anniversary um, Crimea was given to the Ukrainian Socialist, Soviet Socialist Republic just as a, a little gift. It was meaningless at the time, it was a single state. But of course it had thorough consequences later and in 2014 uh, Russia took it back. So, And, and it is actually, isn't it? it and that's one of the things why I like history, that these, these, these parallels, the, these events which at the time seemed so insignificant in later, in later years. because. Be become become very significant. I think it's also the the the, the, the Russian Polish War was probably the time when, from a Russian point of view, the armies started to be better organized. And it probably laid the military foundations for what happened under Peter the Great and Catherine the Great, in terms of the Russian army becoming more professional as a modern word, mm -hmm. but more put, put together on a, on, a, on a sounder basis. Sure. Um... And also far, far more, far more numerous as well, and, and yes, and well organized. This, this absolutely is the case, uh, which then became the hallmark of, of of what the world considers the Soviet armies to be till this day, even though that is not necessarily the case anymore. No. And it's interesting that Poland, although it, it sort of it, uh, it sort of did quite a lot, <laughs> so this will sound terrible, but did quite a lot for Russia in setting Russia on the right course, gave them the Romanovs. Encourage them to have professional sure. armies, which which goes to have uh, dramatic consequences years later. And then the and entered a series of wars, which were, were the Deluge, the the Polish-Russian War, the uprising, that were catastrophically exhausting for the Polish state. One thing that was good was that we had a terrific cadre of officers and and experienced war fighters, which benefited greatly. Uh, I would imagine the entire Europe in 1683, because basically. Of course. By then, we were 40 years into, into almost 40 years into constant warfare. So, so that was the only thing. That and was that, of course, useful. we saw another great, uh, gr another great Polish king, uh, Jan Sobieski. Uh, but that is probably that is probably for another day, Albert. But again, many thanks for, for, for Thank this you. quick canter through uh, Polish geopolitics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.